Hello there students, welcome back to this video series. This is your instructor Dhruvi Bhatt and today we would be talking about theory of production. We would start by understanding what exactly is meant by production. What are different factors of production? Okay, let us first understand that what is meant by production? How can we define production? While talking in terms of economics, what is meant by production? Students, Production is any process which takes some inputs or raw materials which are not usable or which cannot be directly used and converts them into outputs or finished goods which are more valuable and more useful compared to the raw materials which cannot be directly usable. Converting simple wood logs into a table is production. Also, changing perspective of someone is also production. By giving you knowledge, by imparting you knowledge, I am converting a person who is not knowledgeable into a person who is knowledgeable. That is also production. Converting plastic into a chair is also production. In short, converting a set of raw materials, set of non-usable products into something usable and finished products is known as production. But our question here is that what exactly are these inputs or raw materials? Students, the inputs to any production process are known as factors of production. The inputs to any production process are known as factors of production. Which are the factors of production? We would be discussing each one of them. Basically students, there are four major factors of production. There are four major factors of production. Land, labor, capital and entrepreneur. These four have different meanings with respect to what you are thinking right now. You might be thinking land is the surface of land. Labor is set of workers who toil for the entire day. Capital is money and entrepreneur is some businessman who goes out and open the business. Okay, some of your thoughts are right. Some of your thoughts need some modification. We would try to understand each of these factors in detail here. It is an important topic here. Let us try to understand each of the factors of production. Starting first with land. You might be thinking that land is surface of land on which production is done. But... In contrast to your belief, land actually in economics comprises of everything which is naturally available. Which means all the trees, water, stream, this cow, all the animals you utilize for production process, everything which is naturally available to us is known as land. Might it be rain, might it be clouds, might it be agricultural stock. Everything which is naturally available in economics is termed as land. Let us understand some of the characteristics of land. What are different characteristics of land? First and foremost, it is freely available in nature. You don't have to pay price for rainwater, do you? You have to pay a price to filter it though. So, all the naturally available products are freely available from nature because they are a free gift of nature. Secondly, they are available to us in fixed or limited quantity. They are available in a limited quantity. Just like very valuable resources like petroleum. Just like valuable resources like animal stock which is getting extinct in our days due to our carelessness. So, you need to use them wisely as they are in fixed quantity and available in a very limited quantity from nature. You cannot increase its quantity on your will and wish. So you need to use it wisely. Thirdly, land is a primary factor of production. It is a basic or primary factor of production. By using land, you can produce other things which can in turn be raw materials for some other things. For example, you use machineries to produce some different products. But those machines 
are produced using a primary factor of production which is some naturally available products right iron or some other minerals which are already available in nature from those you are making machines and these machines are producing some other goods so basically land is the base or the first factor of production without which any other further production is not possible at all the next characteristic of land says that it is a passive or inactive factor of production it is a passive factor as it's on its own can do nothing you need to employ people which can work on this land which can utilize these resources for bringing out something productive out of it so by default it is a pa passive factor of production it also has diminishing utility as you go on using the land its utility comparatively decreases like the same agricultural land if it is plowed year and again year and again then it will not give the same quality of crop it gave the first time it was plowed let us take the example of some animal if you are using a horse for taking something uphill in the first round the horse will take the products uphill very fast in the second round also it will take very fast but as you keep on using the horse for taking things uphill and bringing it downhill and as the number of rounds increases its capacity decreases it then starts doing the work slowly because it gets tired from doing the work the same thing is true with everything which is natural as you go on using it its ability to satisfy your need decreases its utility decreases our land has diminishing utility lastly the supply of land is inelastic as the demand increases you cannot increase the supply of land so the supply of land is said to be inelastic it cannot be increased on our own will and wish moving forward to the second factor of production which is labor labor is the work exerted in order to participate in the production process here students the labor is of both the kinds the labor can be physical labor where you exert yourself and indulge in physical labor like doing some physical work plowing a land or you can say making a furniture this requires physical labor the other type of labor is mental labor all our it jobs you do not have to exert any physical labor just sit in a chair in an ac cabin and indulge in mental labor it is more skillful labor where you need to use your brains instead of your physical hardships so labor is of two types we would be having physical labor as well as mental labor let us try to understand the characteristics of labor labor students is inseparable from laborer labor is inseparable from laborer it is the laborers who are having this skill the craftsmanship or the mentality to do this particular job the skill to do this particular job is in a laborer you cannot separate the labor from the laborer it can be done only by particular person at a particular place so you need to employ them in order to get out labor of them it is inseparable and it cannot be stored, stored for future use you cannot just store the labor and use it at a future date you need to utilize it at that particular time only because it is inseparable from the laborer the third characteristic says that obviously it is not free no skilled worker will work in free for you and you also should not work in free for anyone internships are okay because there you are gaining knowledge but working for free is 
not what labor does labor comes with a cost unlike naturally available commodities which do not come with a cost labor comes with a cost and it is a costly factor of production it also is an active factor of production it does something the naturally available products though they are freely available they do not do any work themselves they do not produce something themselves we need laborers to do some work on them and that is why laborers are an active factor of production also labor is a heterogeneous factor of production each laborer does work differently each faculty teaches you differently so it is a heterogeneous factor you cannot expect that one person does something in 3 hours then another laborer will also be able to do that same thing in 3 hours they are not machines so each and every laborer is different each laborer will do the work in different manner in different pace of time so it is a heterogeneous factor of production also labor is said to have imperfect mobility we saw that natural products are immobile you they cannot directly move from one place to another without your will and wish obviously animal will move but they will not move according to your will you need to move them according to your wish but here what about laborers they can move laborers are mobile but it is not necessary that they will move suppose i am offered a job in some some another city or some another country i can move i do have the possibility of getting visas and i do have a passport of my own but whether i will move or not for my job is my decision and that decision relies on many other factors whether i am comfortable with other country living in other country following their culture leaving my family behind etc factors come into being and that is why my mobility or laborers mobility is imperfect they can move but whether they will move or will not move is dependent upon them let us understand the third factor of production which is capital ma'am it is very simple you are talking about money right now this is a false assumption students in economics capital doesn't mean money but it actually means all the man made products all the products which are man made in nature even money is capital but apart from money buildings machineries computers everything which is man made a table a chair a fan a tube light everything which is man made and which can be used for production of other useful products is known as capital let us see what are the different characteristics of capital here first and foremost obviously they are man made goods it is a man made factor and it is a secondary factor of production mind you also it is a productive factor of production because it is used to produce other goods though it is a secondary factor but it is a productive factor it has elastic supply as demand for these goods increases the corresponding supply can be increased and that is why it is said to have elastic supply unlike land capital is elastic in supply because with the need the supply also increases also it is more durable and can be stored it is durable for a longer period of time and it can be stored for future use it has limited mobility some of the capital products can be moved very easily but some of the products like huge machineries huge buildings they cannot be moved and that is why we would say that capital has sort of limited mobility last but not the least capital undergoes depreciation what is meant by depreciation as you keep on using capital 
it becomes unusable its value decreases over a period of time say for example new car is worth 5 lakh rupees but after you use it for one or two years its value would decrease to 2 lakh rupees this difference of 3 lakh rupees is known as depreciation because capital goods undergo wear and tear their value decreases over a period of time even if you do not use some capital products say for example i do not switch on a fan at all then too this fan will undergo atmospheric wear and tear and its value will decrease over a period of time this decrease in value is termed as depreciation capital undergoes depreciation with passage of time our last factor of production is entrepreneur he is someone that brings together all other factors of production he is the person who is responsible for production he is an active factor of production and his major role is to make sure that all other three factors of production are at right place at right time he is our businessman and let us check his characteristics obviously he must have ability to organize he must be a good manager he must be able to organize products and persons correctly he must be a very professional person and must be having a professional approach for carrying out production must be a risk taker obviously if you cannot invest money in production you will not be able to do production he must be a risk bearer he must be able to take that risk to open a business start he must be innovative in nature he must get new ideas for production also he must be a decision maker because he will have to make many decisions here last but not the least he must be possessing many good negotiation skills he needs to deal with customers suppliers employees and many people which calls for very good negotiation skills there are many other skills which he must possess like communication skills like he must be intelligent like he must be rich etc you can write all the skills here nothing is wrong entrepreneur must possess each and every skill possible okay students that was all about the factors of production thank you so much for patiently listening to me this is ruibat signing off until next time bye bye